Hi everyone, as requested, today's video is going to be another anti-haul part two of this video here, if you want to check it out. You guys seem to really like it, so thank you. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about the 2024 trends I'll be skipping. Please ignore my hair. I decided to be adventurous and go a little bit more copper, and then upon further inspection, I realized copper is not really flattering on my skin tone. Thankfully, my hairstylist is the biggest sweetheart, and she's going to make it a little bit more reddish. I'm really into the highlights, so I think that's super cute. They just need to be a little bit more red to be more flattering on me. So anyway, please ignore that for the remaining of this video. The first trend I'll be skipping are jelly shoes or jelly sandals. I don't know, they're just not really me. Usually they come in like pastel-y sort of colors with like glitter and stuff like that. The only way I've seen them style that I kind of like are with socks. That's really it. I can't imagine wearing... Actually, I don't need to imagine. When I was a child, I had some and my feet were... Hella sweaty, possibly stinky. I don't remember the smell, but I can just assume that they were probably a little stinky. Anyway, I already know these are gonna blow up because the beautiful Enya did a commercial on TikTok for them. So you already know the girlies are gonna follow suit. Surprisingly, not me. I love her style, by the way. I think she makes everything look good, which can be a bad thing for the rest of us. Because if I were to wear some of the stuff she wears, like, I just, it would not work out on me, but she could pull off anything. So be alarmed. It's a trend I've never gone into, even the first time around. I believe they came back around in 2014, died out, and now they're back again, and I'm still not going to buy them. Trend number two I'll be skipping are mesh ballet flats. I hate the fact that you can just see your foot and your toes through them, like, I don't know, I don't think they're cute. Even with socks, I think I would still hate them. This trend feels like it's something that's gonna come and go super quickly. And realistically, you can only wear this type of shoe in spring, right before it gets too hot or it's too cold. Just not my thing, I don't know. I haven't seen them styled in a cute way at all. You let me know what you think of these. Am I just, am I being too harsh? Let me know. The next trend I'll be skipping are floral 99 cent store slippers, house slippers to be exact. I remember these were such a thing when I was a kid. They would sell them at like the liquor store, little corner stores all the time in like all different colors. I'm surprised I never owned a pair, honestly. At first, when I saw that these were trending, I thought it was super funny. As I saw them styled on cool people, I could see the allure. I could see why they're cute, but like straight up, they just, they're super flimsy, uncomfortable. I have a wider foot and they're like super narrow. So it just would not work out for me. Next item I'll be skipping are rain boots. I've seen a lot of fashion people talk about how these are trending or gonna be trending. It's not the fact that I don't think they're cute. I just feel like I don't really need them. It rains a handful of times throughout the year here. If I lived in a place where it rained a lot, I would definitely get some red ones. I think they'd be really cute. Or if I was chilling on a farm, I lived near a farm, lived on a farm, you know what I mean? But for now, I just feel like it's not necessary to invest in something like this. The next trend I'll definitely be skipping are boat shoes. They're just too preppy for me. Not my vibe at all. They give upperclassmen that owns a boat who's in a sorority, is involved in very suspicious activities. I especially think they're ugly in colors, like these green ones. Brown and black, like, eh, I guess, ooh, and leather. They're a little bit more doable, I guess. But still, just not for me. The next trend I'm skipping, I adore, so I'm kind of sad about it, but that is micro shorts. I think they look adorable with the boots, sneakers, anything really, especially with like a white sock love 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 it is just impractical for my body type they look good but i know the minute i start walking or really like moving whatsoever i already know those shorts are going to be rolling up and driving me crazy there's nothing worse than me being hot sweaty and having to roll down my shorts every few seconds i can't do it i won't do it so longer shorts it is for me an alternative that i'll be investing in is either kind of like a short with the lettuce hem a longer bloomer Something with a little bit more fabric and possibly in a fabric that is breathable rather than that like stretchy fabric that sticks to your skin. Next, I won't be participating in designer prescription glasses. There's absolutely no need to invest in designer readers or prescription glasses. Sunglasses, you can argue with me there. I feel like as far as sunglasses, you definitely want to invest in the the protection, the lens coating, whatever, the, whatever it is. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, I feel like there's so many companies that make dupes of high-end glasses. For instance, like, is it called Firmu? Firmu? And then... I forget the other one. I'll put some brands here on the screen. But there's definitely brands that make affordable versions of high-end glasses. So there really is no need. 
And besides, I've read so many articles about the fact that glasses are made with the exact same materials, whether they're high-end, low-end, whatever, it's the same. So truly, it doesn't really matter. You're just paying for like that little logo on the side of your glasses and like, for those of us on the lower end of the income bracket, like it's not really worth it to pay that amount of money for a little logo on the side of your glasses. So no for me. Next trend I'll be skipping also has to do with glasses and they're just the double bridge prescription glasses, the really like squared one, or I guess it could be kind of ovalish. I feel like those glasses wear you and not the other way around. I guess they're perfect for making a statement. I don't know. I think they're just not my thing, honestly. They feel very like micro trendy, which like, girl, I know, I'm a hypocrite because I wear like the mini glasses that are like super trendy as well. Do it that way you may, uh, just not into those specific style of glasses. Next thing I'll be skipping are Chanel ladylike tweed jackets. I don't know if that's like the official term. Never in a million years would I ever wear a jacket like this, invest in a jacket like this. It leans way too preppy for my personal style. I could totally see someone who leans a little bit more clean girl preppy pulling off this look, but just not for me. Next, I'll be skipping jellyfish hems. And this is a look I love. Like, I think it looks beautiful on people. I love the way it like cascades on people's body. It has so much interest to an outfit. I love it, especially if you have kind of like a mermaid core, like beachy vibe sort of aesthetic. So cute. I feel like it's one of those things that I would buy like one singular dress or skirt and then wear it once and never again. So I'm trying to be very careful. The only thing with the silhouette is I feel like it is not timeless. I think it might be a silhouette or like a hem that we look back on and it's gonna be like, oh yeah, that was very like 2024 of us or like 2024, 2025 of us to do a hem like that. So proceed with caution. Next trend I'll be skipping are balloon and peplum tops. I just straight up don't feel good in them. It gives me a strange figure. Maybe it's all in here, you know what I mean? That I feel like I have to either have no shape or be snatched. Like, I don't know what it is. I feel like this trend might remain for a little while. I feel like we've been seeing these type of tops for about like three to four years. The girlies are still obsessed with them. Please don't hate me, but I really don't like the peplum tops with like the three little bows in the center that have kind of like gaps in between. Except for this ginnam one, it's, it's pretty cute. I don't know, or maybe it's just the person making it look good. I also feel like it's the very trendy way to do the silhouette. Maybe if you want a more timeless version of this, don't go with like the three bow one. Just a suggestion. The closest item I would wear to this sort of silhouette is kind of like a early 2000s like baby doll sort of top. Then again, it's a little bit more fitted. It's not so like flowy, like the examples that I'm showing here. The next item I've changed my mind about, and that is bubble hem. When I first heard about this trend, I was like immediately, no, like not cute, not for me. But as it always happens, I started seeing people style them in very cute ways, especially in like mini skirts. I definitely feel like it's cute now, except not in a maxi midi length. I feel like that's still pretty ugly. Personally, I just won't be participating in this trend. I feel like it doesn't align with my style. Again, I feel like I'll wear it once and then never again. The next trend I'll be skipping is super popular right now, and that is kind of like pajama-esque type pants. I've seen them in stripes, ginnam. It's not even the fact that it looks like pajamas because I'm into pajama shorts or like boxer shorts. And those look like you're wearing your house clothes outside. I don't know, they're just not me. I wouldn't wear them. I can see the allure. They're comfortable, breezy, perfect for summer. I think I'm discovering anything that leans too preppy, I'm just really not into. Next, I'm skipping giant cuffs on jeans. I don't mind a subtle cuff, a double cuff even, and the cuff is like this big. Nah, not for me. It looks really ugly to me. I wish I had more to say, but straight up, I just don't like the look of it. This is a trend though that I will say I swear it comes back every five years or something. Why? What is it? What's the theory behind the giant cuff? Next, we have maxi denim skirts. This is a trend I've been debating on for a couple years, honestly. Whenever I've seen one at the thrift store, I'm like, should I? Shouldn't I? I guess at this point I've decided it's just not for me. Honestly, they also seem very restrictive. They give me the same vibe as like a pencil skirt where you can only like kind of shuffle around. You can't really move much. Next, I'll be skipping straight up sheer lace skirts. I love a lace skirt. I think they're beautiful. I just can't get behind a completely see-through one. Maybe for like a festival like Coachella, like go off. 
But like for everyday wear, I cannot imagine myself walking down the street with like a straight up see-through skirt, my choni showing through. I genuinely would just not feel safe being that exposed out in public. It's just the sad reality. I'm just gonna stick to my white tiered skirt. If I wanna invest in a lacy skirt, it's definitely gonna have a underlayer. This trend also feels very fleeting, I will say. I feel like if you want to invest in something more timeless, go for a tiered white maxi skirt or for a lace skirt with um, an underlayer. Next trend I'm skipping is sequin anything. I think sequin clothing items are really beautiful. They just don't fit with my personal style. Although I did have to show you ones that I like. I like when a top has subtle sequins. That's really cute to me. It's very mermaid, kind of like 70s disco chic. Just not for me. Next is another color of the year besides red or burgundy, and that's cobalt blue. I have no interest in incorporating that color into my personal style. The simple reason being is that I do not look good in cobalt blue. So why am I gonna force myself to wear a color that doesn't look good on me? I've never done like a color analysis, but I can pretty much tell what flatters me. And if you could pull off this color, kudos to you. I think it looks beautiful on some people. Next trend I'll be skipping is the vest with matching short set. It leans a little bit too preppy for me. I know, I'm like a broken record, sorry, but it's true. I think it looks really chic and cute on other people, especially in a cream or white color. Next is a hell no, and that is gold metallic. I think it's ugly, it looks super tacky, especially in pants. No gold metallic for me. Next trend I'll be skipping are quilted patchwork jackets or like military liner jackets. It's nice to see that these jackets have been popular for five years now, I would say. Like I've been seeing them every fall and winter for a while now. I can see the allure of them. Some people can really pull these off. And they have like that specific style. People who wear like those big collars, like the cardigans, they wear like clogs. I'll try to put some references up. Anyway, I'm just not really into them. I prefer a fur line jacket, leather jacket, Eisenhower jacket. So I'll continue to be passing on those. The next trend I'll be skipping on is the bloquette aesthetic. Pairing jerseys with things you wouldn't normally pair with, for instance, with like frilly skirts, shorts wearing your hair in bows. This is a trend I liked when I saw it because I love a good juxtaposition, but it's been overdone. I just don't think it's for me, honestly. I would say it's gonna be year two of this aesthetic being popular. I'm curious to see when it starts to die down. Next trend I decided I'll be skipping are jorts. Simply put, I feel like they're just not flattering on my body type. I have a long torso and shorter legs, so a silhouette like that would completely make my legs disappear and cut me off and make me look shorter. I much rather prefer kind of like a mid-length short or like a shorter short, but some people could really pull it off and make it look really cool. The last two items are miscellaneous, but I thought I would just put them in here for fun. The first one being expensive pimple patches, especially like the really cute ones, like the Sanrio or Star ones. I will admit I own the Star ones and I do wear them, but they do nothing. I do not know why they're so ineffective. So what I do is I wear like a regular hydrocolid, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, patch underneath, and then I put one on top. Reason being is I like cute things, and when I have a cute thing on top of an ugly thing on my face, it keeps me from picking it, makes me feel better. Because let's be honest, when you put makeup on a nasty little juicy pimple, it makes it look worse. What I'm trying to get at is that I will no longer be investing in more expensive pimple patches. They have some really great dupes on Amazon. Just thought I would let you guys in on that in case you also feel like those specific like cute ones are ineffective because they're ineffective for me as well. <laughs> Last one on my list is fancy hand sanitizers, but specifically the Touchland brand. I know they're cute, I know they smell good, when you do a little ch -ch -ch, it is so satisfying, but they are $10, not in this economy. I will not be buying those at all. I just think the price is ludicrous, unnecessary. Sanitizer is sanitizer. That is all I have to say about that. Talking is exhausting, oh my God. How do podcasters do it? Mm -mm. Anyway, that's the end of my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you agree with anything on this list. Just like in the other video, if you guys could put in the comments what trends you'll be skipping. Let's help each other out. Let's help each other save money. Hone in on our personal style. Like if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.